Yeah, I've practiced them because they're audition licks. So like, I know yeah. all the licks. I mean, if if shit is really awkward, um, you know, that's a different story. But you know, for instance, uh, tomorrow we have a concert. We're doing Beethoven's Sixth Symphony. It's like, man, I've played that like four times. Like, yeah, I, I can I can sing the violin part while I play my bass part, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I know what's happening. Like, realistically, like I think it's true for most competent classical musicians you could just walk in and perform it and a lot of times i've done gigs where i get hired and then i play an hour and a half to two hour rehearsal and then just play the whole thing that night and mm. you know it's good it's, it's it's proper it's right right so um like the messiah you know when christmas yeah. time comes i yeah it's it's like people are like wow you guys must be rehearsing so much and you just tell the poor audience member like yeah tons of rehearsal man yeah, it's like yeah. dude showed up this afternoon and i've played this probably 130 times in the last like four years so no, yeah it's just like not. listening to, like listening um, to the conductor what kind of nuance does he want from it and then putting you know or like boeing to like we well, play, play, have to- half the time you don't even listen to them right because if it's just a local like I mean, you know it's to be honest if it, unless it's like a large symphony like the phoenix symphony which right. like when you work with phoenix symphony, you, you know you do everything your principal tells you and you just follow everybody but that's part of being a great musician is you just follow whatever the crew is right like right. whatever that even that local like church gig you just follow everybody else like if everybody else is playing super vibrato garbage whatever like all right i guess that's what we're doing this is what, yeah, this is what we're right so yeah. in that case, you just get called back. Um, <laughs> so it's it's just, you know, again, it's simple logic, really. Um, but to answer your question, I, you know, I, I think a lot of my practice in bass has always been from a very highly technical standpoint. My professor here is a, um, arguably, I think you could put him, if even if you hate him, you put him in the top three best bass, double bass players in the world. Uh, he He's you know, plays violin concertos on bass. He's like the only guy in the world who makes a living being a solo bass player, which is crazy. He just really likes it nice and warm. He's from, from Romania. So, okay. you know, once the Iron Curtain fell, he came over here and, you know, mm-hmm. shows no desire to go back to cold Eastern Europe. <laughs> um, makes it here. What can I say? I like it here too. Um, yeah. So yeah, like highly technical focus. And train it's just very similar to triathlon training it's like i you know i see so many people rack up junkyards in the pool because they think it helps junkyards on the bike or junkyards junk miles on the bike blah 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 like you know great i know tons of people who practice six hours a day and i, I get more gigs than them and it's like well why well there's a lot of aspects to this just like triathlon there's a lot of aspects so good good fundamental foundations um and just being aware, like thinking about what you're doing, uh, will get you a lot further than just like mindlessly sitting in a room. Now it does help that I play bass, you know, same, same with like, you know, bassoon players in the wind section, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're a flute girl, you're a dime a dozen, right? Every, every institution in the country has, you know, 200 flute applicants every year for their doctoral program. Whereas if you play, you know, walrus of a double bass, yeah. You're statistically in a lot much better situation than yeah. Or if you play else. like the harp, you're like oh, you're like five right. people to play the harp. I I I always say if if I had to do it all over again, I'd pick a different instrument. I would do organ, okay. or harp. Organ organ is very cool. Nobody plays organ, right? It's just like piano players. Like yeah, dime a dozen. But actually playing organ, whoa, now you've got some weird special interest that supersedes mm-hmm. everything. And and organ players find work like crazy. I also think it's just a cool instrument. There's only two organ builders in the entire United States. And yeah. like, what a cool thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, to be honest, like it's it's just kind of a mess a lot of the time in terms of what I'm doing. And But I've been playing so long now at a certain point, like most of the music that I have to deal with, I can, it's, pretty much under the control very much right it's within it's within your proficiency it's not like no we're gonna step like yeah um uh, why i just forget his name wagner like the first time i played a wagner piece i was out of my mind with just all the accidentals just coming at you super fast i was like what is happening right now uh and i'm sure i didn't even nail half of it 
uh, when we got to perform. But so, it, but it, you know, if I had practiced, 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 like get to that point, it was like I played Wagner, I can play it proficiently. Like I'm not going to worry about you know something in a much like like we do it for a Christmas concert where it's almost like pops, where it's like right. everything's quarter notes, half notes. You're just like, I don't need to practice this. We'll just show up. It'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, you know, and I relate music as you probably like. I I I consider music not even a, at least for like music players. Like we're not really, we don't, we're not artists. We're just we're tradesmen. Ultimately, right. music school isn't in a college academic sense. I mean, it is in, in in the academic side, but like what people think of as musicians, it's like, man, we're just tradesmen. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm just providing a product that is similar skilled labor to that of any plumber or electrician. Now, this pisses off my colleagues quite quite a lot, but I, <laughs> I, I have a much more pragmatic analysis of what we do, which is simply play the notes on the page like machines. If we do a good job, we're a good machine who deserves nice rewards. If we do a bad job, we're a poor machine who gets crap. So... In that sense, I think it helps, especially for, for many people who, you know, like in the triathlon world who aren't musicians, right? Like what I sort of just like, you know, music is a trade sort of makes sense at that point, right? So, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's a large part of it. Um, but yeah, I, I've had a long, it was harder in my undergrad. I, I, I practiced a lot more um, and had a lot further gap to make up. Um, and now it's sort of, you know, in a different different realm. You're, you're like polishing off things as opposed to like just getting in the massive amounts of volume. But um, in that sense, it does differ than try. But um, yeah, I, I guess the answer to your question is I don't know, but I sort of try to take it day by day in terms of priorities. Um, yeah. You know, like this week, this weekend's crazy. I have a six, six and a half hour, six hour recording session on Sunday. So it's like, I've done my two long rides already this late week, this morning and yesterday. So that's kind of the nice thing. But um, yeah, there's there's always some weirdness, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and musician schedules are already weird. So <laughs> yeah, mine's extra weird. I mean, this leads to my like I train mostly by myself. I think more athletes should be uh, willing to seize that especially for swimming. I, I sense this vein and current amongst my athletes I coach and other people I know like that they don't want to swim by themselves. There's mm. nothing to be afraid. I if you don't want to swim by yourself. <laughs> well, good, good, good. I mean, like, but some, a lot of people don't. No, no, don't no, I, don't. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, like, right. it's just funny because I'm, I'm more like, because I've had some of the guys that I race with locally, you know, the, basically the top five of us here in town, Kansas City, we, we all know each other. We've been racing together for eight, ten years now. And right. several of them have been like, hey, you know, like, we should get together and train. And I'm like, man, I'm self-employed. Like I've done training by the time you get off work. I don't want to wait till seven in the evening. Like I get, right. get it done. And it, so I'm just like, I'll, let me do my or, own thing. Wake up at, or wake up at four 30 in the morning. If I don't have to, you know, yeah. there is this cult. There is this, and, and as we all sort of know it, but nobody really wants to say it. We always like triathlon has to have this like weird cult fetish of like extra pain on top of the pain. It's like, Oh, not only do I as a pro have to like, train an ungodly sum of hours and put my body through the you know physical like limits of its abilities but i'm gonna do it at four in the morning because that's what we do that's what we just gotta do it at four in the morning and it's like just really okay you got it chief whatever you want you know so <laughs> there is that weird vein that i just i don't ascribe to and, and i think I asked, maybe it has to do with my upbringing. Maybe it has to do with my own like personal history, but I, I, I don't know. At the same time, I think it's just, a, just calm down. You got to enjoy your life a little bit. You can't just be puritanical, smashing your face into a, you know, training wall all the time. So yeah. yeah, I think that one, that one's always funny to me. It's like pros who wake up. It's like, you can't, man, I know you don't do anything. Why do you have like a before? I know right. you're not doing it. I'd be like, I'm not turning the alarm clock on. I'm just, I'll get up when I get up and then start the day if that's all I'm doing. Right, right. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. So, I mean, the same thing with like group rides and things. Like, I don't really group ride. I mean, I, I could justify it on a training front because, like, oh, well, I don't race draft legal. So, when I'm racing, I'm by myself. 
but you know i think a lot of it's just also like i don't want to go and like have a schedule with some other people and on top of that like a lot of time a lot of times i have a very late friday or saturday night if i have a gig and by the time i get home for like like it's funny because you know if i work something like the phoenix symphony or arizona broadway theater then my like the overall hours i'll be gone from the house might be six to eight hours but it's all at night and or in the evening right like so you know if i leave at four and get back at 10 that's six hours right so by the time i get home and it's like well i'm gonna dink around a little bit before i go to bed and the next thing you know it's like oh it's 11 30 or something or 11 it's like well i'm not waking up at six for that group right because i have half a brain and realize that it, you know if you just get tired and do stuff it's, you don't get consistent training so and I think to bring it all back to that point, because I know, I know, um, you know, my, my coach, Tim Crowley has been like a constant, I've had the same coach for eight years now, pretty much. And I trust him with everything. And I I'm just great guy in every sense of the word. Um, and I, you know, his credential list is endless. I mean, he's, he's been around for forever, he coached the Olympic team in 08, um, for instance, but it's just all about consistency, which sometimes I think is so overlooked in our desire to like find a new aero device or find a new training mm -hmm. toy or get in these massive workouts. Like, oh, my athletes this week train 20, 30 hours and they've had four weeks at 30 hours. And then it's like, oh, wow, by the time race season came around, they're all broken hugs, yep. right? It's like, well, what did that accomplish? Very little. But the goal is ultimately consistency. So I think if, if any, like the one, it's such a trite word thrown around so often, but I mean like a macro sense consistency and like my own playing as a musician has been like just stupid consistent for many years. It's like, oh, I don't practice a ton. I don't practice like nothing and blah, 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 blah. And I study progress somewhere. Same with like training. It's like, yes, I don't, I don't get anywhere near the hours like the big, some of the big guys do, but God damn it. Do I stay nice on this little incline right mm -hmm. my angle of incline is like a one per one degree or two degrees right whereas mm -hmm. people want it to be like 45 and it's like well maybe the 45 one works sometimes but i'd rather put all of my money on the nice steady approach you know it's 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 just it's like betting on horses you, i'm betting on them to place right i'm gonna bet on the horse with the best odds to place right hey great so i can go and <laughs> Every time, all races, I'm a winner, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to win more than 10 cents on that bet, but I'm a winner. Like, you know, so in that sense, like quite practically, it's a stupid analogy, but like in your own like life progression as a musician, as an athlete, it's like that's been my kind of MO. Mm -hmm. And it weirds people out sometimes. It confuses people, but it's, it's worked for me. I, I feel like if you're doing the thing that nobody else is doing, you're probably doing the right thing. That's been my MO is like, <laughs> if everybody's going right, I'm going left. And that's worked out right. pretty well for me. So it's right. kind of the similar yeah. vein where everybody wants that like instant success. You're like, no, that's cool. Like I'll just take, like I'll pick up my one rock today and I'll pick up another rock tomorrow and I'll have right. my, you know, right. I'll have enough stones to build a house eventually. Yeah. It's, and it's and on a more practical front. I think we see that in the current, like, uh, try industry in terms of the products and goods being pumped out there. I, you know, they're all hitting that vein of like, right now you can get 3% on your VO2 if you do this. And you're like, oh God, here we go again. It's yeah. like, you know, everything, everything that's old is new again. And so it's, it's that I, I've been around. It's funny. I'm, you know, I'm not that old, but I've, I've been doing triathlon now for um, almost like pretty much almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, it's funny because you start seeing the same things. It's like, oh, this is really hot in 2011 and then just blew up. And like, oh, no, it's coming back, right? Like, yeah. It's like it, it's – and with Tim, who's been in it for like 35 or just 30 years now, right? Like mm -hmm. like Tim Race, Dave Scott, and Mark Allen, mm -hmm. right? So it's just great to see that and you just, just talk about the things that – it's like this makes no sense. Like we've seen this before. Like the trends just come back and it's just – it's very funny. It's very funny on like on a more materialistic note. Yeah. Like everything is, is new under the sun. It's like, come on, guys, we were doing this. People thought about this 30 years ago. We all agreed it was a stupid idea. So we put it away. Oh, look, it's back. You know, I could sit here and start naming things, but that's probably not good for either of our uh, potential <laughs> sponsorship.
opportunities at any given moment. Yeah, no worries. Um, we're a little over time, but I'm going to ask anyway. We kind of been dancing around this uh, sure. our whole conversation, but there. So there's a question. Last season, I asked everybody about recovery food. Um, this year, I'm calling them seasons, but years. This year, uh, I'm asking everybody, what do you think the purpose of sport is? What do you think the purpose of sport is? Wow. Um, I'll give you a historical answer that I somewhat agree to. The, the, the hope that we don't go kill each other. I mean, you know, what was the point of medieval tournaments, right? To, to essentially right. give people an outlet for not, you know, going off and killing each other. And we're ultimately horrible, violent human beings. So... I don't know. I think that's it on a practical answer. I mean, in terms of our modern world, of course, we'd like to think we're so much more nuanced beyond that. But mm -hmm. I think I don't think we're any better than the Romans or the or the or Charlemagne's empire. Yeah. Are we? I don't I mean I don't think so. So perhaps that's not the answer you're looking for. It's a little bit more vicious. I'm not looking for I an think... answer. I'm just looking <laughs> to have an answer. <laughs> I'm sure it's different than the rest of the uh, rest of your uh, respondents. Um, no, I do genuinely believe uh, that that ultimately the point of sport is for all of us is just to quell some sort of animalistic behavior that we have. I mean, I'll be honest, I do a lot of workouts and I do two a days because it makes me feel good. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're all sort of addicted to exercise and like that's a whole nother can of worms. But um there's something raw about it, right? Sports kind of keep us all in check, keep those like natural instincts sort of, you know, quelled. Um, I don't, it, it's, it's kind of what we've agreed is the more civilized approach to the alternative, which is, mm -hmm. which is much more rough, Sean. I mean, Helmut von Moltke, uh, kind of the, the German architect of the World War One battle plans. You know, I'm a big fan of history if you haven't gathered. Um, you know, they, that was a whole school of thought there that, like, you know, without war, like, man's just bad. Like, he just can't do good things. Like, it's the crucible that makes men do insane things. And, um, you know, I, I won't go so far as to, to agree with the German architects of that ideology, but ultimately, I think sport takes on a little tiny bit of that crucible, right? Like, through the crucible of, like, doing these hard things triathlon, cycling, handball, whatever it, it is, right? Like you name the sport, that is in of itself this little battle, right? This like, you know, much more uh, civilized mm -hmm. battle. But, but by doing that battle, we gain something about ourselves, about our sense of duty, about our sense of belonging, about our ability of resilience, of grit, and, you know, to go out and finish a triathlon is always a success. Because, you know, not that it's necessarily like, oh, it's what an empowering journey I did this, but no, but it's the fact that you did the journey at all and got through to the end, that's the crucible, right? Like you, you got through the heat. Um, so yeah, so to, so to bring it back together, I think sport is very, is, is the, you know, civilized people answer to war and, and, and that desire, these animalistic instincts in us have to be quelled somewhere. And so we put them there. So it's, it's very much a function of biology, I suppose, if you were to believe that it's, that's an element of biology, but yeah, I don't know. So that's my answer. I think it's, it's, it's very, uh, animalistic. It's an intrinsic thing, but, um, yeah, we'll see. Let me know if somebody else comes up with such a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the years just get going. Yeah, the years just oh, get right. going. So I've got a whole year's worth of people to ask this question. So we'll have to see what everybody else comes up with this year. My like the answers about the food last year was always interesting because it was like you get a divergence of two answers. You get people say like uh, almost PC answer like I like salad or something, and then the majority of people would be like. Like, uh, so I'd ask, what's a, a recovery food? If you can only choose one recovery food for the rest of your life, what do you choose? And most people would be like beer, pizza, ice cream, like something that sure. makes them feel good rather than necessarily fuels their body. So it is like, it, this is a little more esoteric of a question. Um, but well, I'm I am a doctoral student and a, and a man who listens to a copious amount of audiobooks. So <laughs> esoteric, just, ah. Ah, I do. I mean, literally, last <laughs> two hours that we're just gonna essentially argue about the entire like premise of theater and things. So I, I mean, you know, come on. 
You throw you throw me a great bone. I mean, we can hey. have a two hour discussion on this. So well, yeah, we can keep going. But I, like I said, we're we're probably we're over time here. Um, so I'll have to have you on another time. Um, Evan, sure. If, if, if people want to find you, um, where can they kind of find you? See what you're doing. See sure. What the I, are, I, that... I post post somewhat often on my Instagram. It's just Evan Party. Um, if you want to get in contact with me. I'm on Facebook. I also have a website, Evan Party Triathlon. Um, I'm also my. I'm sponsored this year by uh, Speedhound, which is a kind of a new grassroots endurance sports company out of California, run by a great guy trying to get uh, triathlon products to people at a much fairer price. Uh, kind of cutting out some of the middlemen, and so uh, some great things coming out of that um, company is that I'm associated with, hopefully in this next year. Or so. Uh, keep an eye out for that as well. That's that's some ongoing uh, interesting projects coming out from them. But um, yeah, I think that, that's, that's about it. Thanks for spending right. some time with me, Evan. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on.